We talk a lot about this. There's obviously been a lot of attention with the IPO of Beyond Meat, but there are so many companies out there now that appear to be working on some sort of alternative to, I guess, the way we normally sort of uh, grow uh, and process, uh, you know, animal-based foods. And I'm wondering, who, what is the actual consumer that we're aiming for here? Because this was originally pitched as an idea that it's appealing to vegans and vegetarians, but it seems that there's a much broader universe in play here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the this movement is greater than just a, an individual pocket of people. Um, I think there are actually four factors that are really uh, driving this opportunity, and those four factors are first, you know, vegan. Even though it's small, it is growing and it is attracting a lot of people. Uh, two, there are people very interested in knowing how their food is made where it's made and what's its impact on the environment. And people have become very aware that agriculture, and specifically animal agriculture, has a big drain on the environment. Third, a lot of people are interested in eating more plant-based foods because um, they've been told that it's healthier for them and that they should include more plant-based uh, products in their uh, diet. And then finally, four, with any other trend that occurs in the food industry, <coughs> It's become cool. Um, we would call it badge value. A lot of people are interested in it. They want to be seen doing it. They know other famous people are doing it. Our hypothesis at uh, Motif Food Works is that those are all great movements, but what also has to occur is those products have to continue to con taste better um, and also become more affordable. Right now, many of those products are priced at a very significant premium, and right. those are both things that the food industry requires. So, Jonathan, talk to us specifically about Motif. What's your role in the whole process, and what kinds of clients do you work with? So we are an ingredients innovation company. Our objective is to use technology uh, to discover and pioneer the development of new food experiences with specifically to focus on improving the taste, the texture, and the nutrition of plant-based foods. And to do that by using science and technology to really understand how food is uh, structured, how those structures then uh, affect the taste and other properties that lead to the sensory experience, and be able to do that in a way that improves the experience for the consumer without using animal-based ingredients. And so what type of companies are you working with here? So we would be working with all the majors and all the minors. Uh, let's face it, um, everybody wants to get into this space. The growth and the interest is incredible. So uh, without naming names, obviously, we're talking to most of the major food companies. But we're also very interested in working with smaller guys. Um, my experience in the food industry tells me that they will move faster. They will do a launch and learn approach. And those brands and those ideas will often be the uh, starting point by which other bigger companies then come in and s expand those and develop those even further. So we're, we're going to focus on working in both areas. Jonathan, I want to ask a question about sort of, I don't know if it's the, an ethics related question, but you identified several uh, big trends working in favor of plant-based proteins and finding new ways through science to develop proteins that don't have maybe as much animal cruelty or environmental impact. Nonetheless, we live in a time of a lot of suspicion about big tech and algorithms and not really knowing what's behind the scenes and the products that were served up. And should people be concerned of some of these ideas now moving into the food space where something is served up to us, but we really don't know what it is? Like if I get ground beef at the store, I know what ground beef is. I may not know everything about where it came from, but I know what ground beef is. If I get some sort of vegan ground beef alternative that was made in a lab with ingredients that were developed from peas and yeast and all other stuff, should I feel totally secure that, you know, that, uh, of what's in it? Well, first of all, it's really important that the companies working in this space are transparent and that they are being very clear about the ingredients, the processes, how they're making their food products. Um, there is no substitute. A consumer absolutely has the right to know what's in their food. 
and to know how their food was prepared and what are the constituents. So I, I'm a firm believer that um, the first conversation between us and the consumer should be uh, about creating trust and that we will be yeah. transparent and tell you exactly what we're doing.